All right, so now we want to determine the influence line for the internal shear at point D. We have to draw the structure by removing this action of the internal shear. And in this case, it means allowing point D to go up and down, but not allowing rotation, because we still have to be able to transfer moments across the section, as well as axial forces. So that means we're going to throw in some rollers here, and then add blocks to represent the moment transfer. And now point D can go up and down. It can transfer axial forces and moments, but it cannot transfer shear. And now we want to introduce the unit displacement associated with the shear force. And here is where the internal sign convention that you're using is important. So here, what I typically use is that the internal shear forces at a cut are downwards on the left side of the cut and upwards on the right side of the cut. So this is my positive internal shear sign convention. So that means in terms of unit displacements, I'm going to have the left side of this go downwards and the right side go upwards. And I'm going to draw a deflective shape that, that shows that. And here it's re important to remember that these lines from A to D and D to B have to have the same slope. And what's unknown here is that this vertical distance and this vertical distance is unknown. So for now, I'll call them y1 and y2. Because point D went up and this is a continuous beam, I'm just going to extend this line downwards. And this is what my qualitative deflective shapes looks like. I'll call this y3, because that's a magnitude that we're going to want to find out. And notice when I draw this deflective shape, because of this release here, I really have only rigid body motions, and I have to obey boundary conditions. So point A here is still zero displacement. Point B is zero displacement. And now I want to work out the, the values, these y1, y2, and y3, using just the geometry of the structure. You could always just apply you know, a unit force at the location. So I could apply a unit force at C and then calculate by statics internal shear force at D and that would give me the value of the influence line right here at this point. But I can do this by geometry as well. And one thing I know is that if I were to extend this line, the full length here, I know that this distance from point B to here, this is equal to 1. And I can go by similar triangles. I can determine, I can say that 1 over 15 meters is equal to y2 over 7.5 meters. And that tells me that y2 is equal to 0 0.5. And I also know that the relative distance between here and here, this total distance must be 1 which means that y1 plus y2 is equal to 1. And that also you know, lets me conclude that y1 is equal to 0 0.5 as well. y3, very similarly, because this angle and this angle are the same, or having the same slope, I can again use similar triangles. You know, And this is probably trivial, so I'll do this pretty quick, but which tells me that y3 also equals 0 0.5. Now I can go ahead and redraw my influence line on a nice graph. So there's my influence line for VD.